So, straight into the movie, and zombies have already taken over DC, the most protected city in the United States, and the president has already been supposedly killed? I don't care how fast this infection spread or how fast these zombies are. Armed guards, secret service, secret underground military troops, something could stop this. If Woody Harrelson can take out 80 zombies with two pistols, the secret service can do a lot more. The area in front of the Capitol building is devoid of people and zombies, and this guy has enough time to check around and see the barren leftover destruction without any zombies appearing? Is this a body camera or a regular camera? Because it stays in focus on the zombie while keeping the victim slightly in shock before getting bitten. This guy dies, or at least gives up, from one bite to his hip. <laughs> America. The movie strongly dictates what is necessary to survive in a zombie apocalypse with some guided rules. I can appreciate that at this point. Minus one sin. People apparently die and go instantly limp from one bite to any part of their body. While I do agree with Mark Zuckerberg that you always should shoot the head, why does this zombie fall to the ground after being shot in the chest and pretend to be dead for a second? And why does this woman just stand there staring at him amidst the chaos in the city? Aren't there other zombies to worry about? Oh, there they are. I'm surprised staying away from bathrooms is so high up on a zombie survival rule list. Wouldn't there be much more important things to stress, like keeping quiet and reducing noise? Or maybe keeping a good weapon on you? Oh wait, we have to have toilet humor. Never mind. This clip show intro for the opening credits shows the zombie epidemic taking over, but there are a few things that don't make sense to me, including why this car is bursting into flames for no discernible reason except zombies are running at this business guy. The bride-to-be zombie starts to attack and is completely bloodied in the face as she attacks her fiancé. With no other zombies around and the procession still acting orderly, did she get bitten before the wedding and didn't tell anyone? Was her face covered in blood and her groom said, meh, Screw it, I'm getting late tonight anyways. Well, there is a scene with a stripper and her boobs flopping everywhere, but I can't show that, so instead, here's a video of my cat. But how did she get so bloodied and become zombified when it seems like the gentlemen there were probably just inside making it rain on her? She even has a few bills in her G-string. How did three father-son combos turn in the middle of this three-legged race, yet the two up front are still uninfected? I swear, Thanos snapped and half the universe became overly bloodied zombies out of nowhere. I'm in Garland, Texas, and it may look like zombies destroyed it, but that's actually just Garland. Being from Dallas and growing up somewhat close to Garland, I can wholeheartedly agree with what Mark Zuckerberg says here. Minus one sin. Why would you even go to a gas station bathroom? Just piss or shit outside, man. Nobody cares about public defecation anymore. Maybe you should make a have car keys handy rule or make sure your door is locked or unlocked rule. A bit unsafe to leave a car unlocked for a zombie to possibly sneak in. And this is what happens when you set rules for your toilet over your rules for your means of transportation. Zombies apparently sneak into cars and take power naps and can be angrily awakened when you interrupt said naps. So you basically ruined your car to set an example for why we should wear seatbelts? How about lock your damn door first? You just shot a double barrel shotgun. Is there not a rule for making about 155 decibels of noise? So what is Zuckerberg's plan as he strolls with his luggage through a highway full of empty cars? You saw that zombie was straight chilling in your car before, and you're just gonna casually go between all of these cars to possibly get ambushed again with whatever meager ammunition you have left? Because you can't have a scrawny weakling in an action-based movie without a badass to counteract him. Let's not talk or say anything. We'll just display how tough one guy is and how scared the other is by pointing guns at each other. Not like someone could pull a trigger at any moment. Oh, now you think to check the back seat when you get in a car with someone who just drove up? Bro, don't waste liquor like that. Rule number 420. Alcohol can be used for cleaning wounds, molotovs, or for dulling the pain, whether it be physical or emotional. Convenient the crashed airplane left a wide enough gap on an open road for them to drive through. Now I have to ask if any hostess delivery truck drivers are watching, but why the hell would a truck be delivering just one type of product? Seems counterproductive for businesses to be delivering one dessert. Just shit in the woods or on the road. Stop putting yourself in dangerous situations because you just want to wipe your ass and talk about clowns. Because the answer to not being a loser is always finding a girlfriend. The zombie neighbor girl named 406 waits for Mark Zuckerberg to wake up before revealing she is a zombie to him. She had all that time to bite him. 
off. She hesitates to attack so Zuckerberg can have this quirky blunder moment. She doesn't bite him here and decides to throw him down instead. It's a fast acting virus that left you with a swollen brain, a raging fever, that made you hateful, violent, and gave you a really, really bad case of the munchies. At least we get some kind of quick rundown of how the virus works at a medical level. Minus one sin, maybe. You're gonna risk our lives for a Twinkie? In this instance, Zuckerberg would be good at zombie sins. Woody Harrelson tosses his bat after only killing two zombies. With how often they surprise attack, maybe you shouldn't so readily disarm yourself. But at least he keeps a few more at his hip. The big hoss zombie just sits there and lets Woody walk on up for an impromptu haircut. Rule 22 does not make much sense to me. Why make it easier for zombies on the outside to get in? If you know your way out, why do you need a box to prop it open? For how wary Woody was earlier, he sure was easily willing to hand over a double barrel shotgun to someone he just met. So do you think it's true? You know about Pacific Clearland? Totally zombie free. Oh boy, because an amusement park would be high on the list for the military and government agencies to set up a safe haven. Four girls that just outsmarted two guys out of their survival supplies, they sure have an idiotic endgame. How do you know it's a post-apocalypse in a movie? Just throw in an abandoned military tank in a small town. Let's have a discussion about cool zombie kills while out in the open in a once populated town. Nobody will run out and try to attack you. Let's go ahead and vent our frustration in the loudest way possible. For how obsessive Zuckerberg is about the rules of zombie survival, he sure does not give two flying fucks about them making sound. Somehow the driver's arms here stayed gripped to the wheel while being eaten alive. At least Woody used a cloth to pick him up. Convenient they find a fully gassed Hummer with a stockade of firearms right after they got their car stolen. Maybe it's a commentary on the American South, but plot devices are plot devices. Are you kidding me? Wasting ammo and making that much noise? Mara, maybe skinny dipping in the Yellowstone River, or swinging from the chandeliers in the Playboy Mansion. Not a sin, but I'm gonna say he does both of these things in Zombieland 2 as a callback. How convenient they run into these two girls again and find the car that was stolen from them. You didn't think to check behind that giant hay barrel near an abandoned car? Really? And you call yourself survivors? So these girls stole their stuff and left them behind before, but now decide to take them along on their road trip. Why? So because we are teenagers, are lonely, horny, and have abandonment issues, we are gonna drop any reservations we have about these strangers over one conversation? There are surprisingly a lot of places with still running electricity at this point in the zombie apocalypse. The US military and police forces are gone, but apparently electricians are still hard at work keeping the Native American gift stores and amusement parks powered on. You gotta love that there is only one zombie manning this shop. You would think there would be other zombies that turn this guy into the zombie in the first place. The zombies in Zombieland sure like to chill by themselves. Apparently this church faring elderly woman has the ingenuity to set up a Looney Tune style piano pulley system all by herself during a zombie apocalypse. It's not truly a zombie movie unless the characters have that one scene where they go in an abandoned and somehow untouched store and get to have a little fun. I'm gonna have a freaking aneurysm from their disregard of making as much noise as humanly possible. They rang a bell earlier and got the attention of one zombie. Now here they are breaking everything in sight in the loudest ways possible. Rule number 666, don't be a dipshit and don't make a lot of noise. She's not, she's only famous when she's Hannah Montana when she's wearing the wig. A universe where Miley Cyrus would never come in like a wrecking ball? Just stay as a Disney Channel sweetheart? Minus one sin. Loss, or I should say lost, Angeles is oddly devoid of zombie hordes and has pretty open roadways. Wouldn't a major city like this have a huge zombie population at this point? Oh, there's a small horde now. Does every building in every scene have working electricity and has not been touched by looters, ransackers, or zombies? Dude, people would quickly be raiding celebrities' houses. No questions asked. Crows, no one listens to hello inside voices. Don't you freaking dare!
dare start declaring people to use their inside voices when you went all Legend of Zelda on those Native American pots earlier. Does every celebrity have a viewing room to watch their own movies? I get it. Murray is an actor and he is using his special ability to pretend to be a zombie to avoid detection by other zombies. But why go up to healthy survivors and act like you're about to attack them? At this point, people will have an itchy trigger finger. Three people thought this was a fun idea. Three separate people. You got what you deserve, Bill. Oh, for fuck's sake. Oh, they're making as much noise as possible again. There is surprisingly little recoil with these shotguns and rifles. Little Rock even barely pulls the trigger and gets a few shots off. I've tried firing off a shotgun before and I got popped in the mouth. I told you to lean forward, bro. I don't know, best thing about Zland, no, no Facebook status updates. Says the guy that made Facebook. All right, at this point, it feels like less of a zombie movie and more if Thanos snapped and erased everyone except Zuckerberg, Woody, School of Rock student, Zoe Deschanel remastered, and Bill Murray. So my first R-rated movie, yeah, Anaconda. Actually, Anaconda is rated PG-13. Hey, little help, moving the couch. Woody prevents a Woody. What's our rule? Trust no one, just you and me. Just you and me. Too bad you didn't follow that rule when you decided to take these two strangers on a road trip in the first place. A big ass car like that must have terrible miles per gallon. Wouldn't they have issues every few dozen miles of getting more gas for that tank? For once, making a bunch of noise and advertising your whereabouts are actually attracting zombies, but only so we can have the final climax and to remind us that, oh yeah, there are zombies in this movie. I just hate how these survivors start playing dumb so they can enjoy the little things. How are they getting off and on these rides? Don't you need a separate person to operate them to turn them off and on? If any of you have worked at an amusement park ride, please let me know how this would work in the comments. These zombies can scale walls and structures and flock to sounds and lights, but completely avoid Hollywood homes, highway souvenir stores, and shotgun fire. Oh no. What did you expect? How the hell did they get off that boat to be in this chase in the first place? Wouldn't it have been safer to stay on the rocking ship and maybe duck to hide? The zombies would just be splattered by the ship if they attempted to attack them. Didn't think to carry any guns with you or keep some in the car in case, I don't know, zombies showed up? Yeah, let's just submerge our only ride in the river and take one gun for each of us. This zombie here decides to wait and even is a few feet back from where he was earlier so Zoe can have her elongated paws and view at the Tower of Power. Zoe Deschanel fires 12 shots from her pump action shotgun without reloading once. This zombie gets shot by neither of the sisters but looks and acts like he did. Boy howdy, they are just wrapped to the brim with ideas that won't ever backfire. In a bit of Borderlands logic, shooting the control panel gets this ride to completely stop and lock in place. Almost forgot that there are rules enforced in this movie, despite the ludicrous amount of stupid decisions made by the people, including Zuckerberg. A whole nother group of zombies not attracted to the girls appears so they can take a bite out of Woody. Running into a haunted house attraction seems like a bad idea, considering how close quarters and how many dead ends it could have. Like, I don't know, it might have a hall of mirrors to stop you. This seems heavily unsafe for regular park goers. After finally shooting her 13th shell, Zoe says she has finally ran out. Now that is an impressive chamber you've got on that gun. How convenient and unsafe this park is. A roller coaster car rolls up and just rolls back on for Woody to have the ride of his life. Again, I thought operators were needed for these two operate. Not gonna lie, someone should definitely make this a theme park ride. Minus one sin. While a badass final stand for Woody, I gotta say that locked window gate breaks open and then locks itself back up between these two scenes. Woody must have been playing a lot of Call of Duty Zombies and gotten the carpenter power up off screen. I don't care how badass you are, there was nearly 80 zombies surrounding that booth and you took them all out with headshots with two pistols and a few extra clips before they broke in? Okay, no. The clown has a stare down with Zuckerberg. Maybe the clown was thinking, oh, there's another dead clown right in front of me. That some rules are made to be broken. Oh, believe me, you've broken a lot of zombie rules, but this one was specifically so you can get laid. The clown zombie just stays on the ground after a gut shot long enough for Zuckerberg to honk that horn. Apparently, they wiped out every last zombie that flocked to this gleaming beacon of, hey, come eat whatever is here, long enough for Woody to shoot his Twinkies. The main takeaway from his rules are cardio, seatbelts, and a totally random bit about sunscreen at night? Make some noise, everyone! Make some noise, because apparently, 
It doesn't matter if you make it. Sorry. Wow. 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 wow.